Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Lenovo Yoga A940. This is a large all-in-one PC. It's got a 27-inch 4K display, and it's got some neat features to it, including the ability to put it down in this large tablet mode. And of course, it has pen and touch support as part of the deal as well. And we're going to be taking a closer look at this machine and what it is capable of here in just a second. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this computer is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is going to be one of these machines that has a lot of different configurations, but the one that's available at the time I'm recording this video costs about $2,600, but I suspect they'll have less expensive versions as well. It's got a 27 inch IPS 4K touch display. And as you can see here, you've got a lot of uh, variability as to where that display uh, sits. So you can have it go down pretty much to this angle here for drawing, uh, but you can also move it all the way up like so. It doesn't have a straight vertical control on it, but I think you can probably get it to a point that will work pretty nicely. All the guts of the computer are in this portion here. Now this one comes equipped for this price point with an i7-8700 processor. That's a six core chip. It also has 16 gigabytes of RAM, although the one on Lenovo's website has 32 gigs of RAM available. You can upgrade the storage and the RAM, but not the processor. It also has an AMD Radeon RX 560 GPU with four gigabytes of video memory. This lines up roughly with what you might see out of a GTX 1050 from Nvidia. So the graphics performance isn't uh, blockbuster outstanding here, but it is better than what you would get out of a computer that has no GPU at all. And you can run some games on here that you might not be able to run on a computer that doesn't have one of those discrete graphic chips on board. Now what's also neat about this is that there's a little charging pad here on the right hand side that you can put your phone down on and charge the phone while you're working on it throughout the day. And they also have a spot here for the pen to go, so you have a place to put it. Uh, but you can't take this off if this is too wide for you, so just bear that in mind. But it is nice to have uh, this space not go wasted and you can, again, charge up your phone with a Qi charger and uh, keep your pen secure in the little pen holder here. Uh, the pen does require a battery, uh, one of those uh, quadruple A batteries, I believe. So it won't be charging while it's in here, but again, at least you have a place to put it. And they've got a bunch of ports on this one as well. Uh, so on the left-hand side, we've got a Thunderbolt 3 port. Uh, it's also functional as a USB Type-C port. That is a four-lane Thunderbolt port, so you can uh, use some of the higher speed devices. You could even get an external GPU if you wanted more graphical horsepower. That's something you could attach to it if you wanted to. It also has a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port uh, for 10 gigabits per second of data performance out of that second port. Uh, you have the power switch and the headphone jack as well. And I almost forgot the full-size SD card reader there on the side. Now on the back, you have your power connector, four USB 3.0 ports, and then you'll notice there's an HDMI port on there. And that port's rather interesting because you can use it as an output, but you can also use it as an input. And let me switch camera angles here. There's a button in the back here right next to that port. And if I push that, it'll put the monitor into input mode. And as you can see here, I've got a Nintendo Switch already hooked up to it, and I can use this monitor as a monitor. And then when I'm done, I can switch back to the computer by pushing the button here to go back to that. Now note that, that this is not going to be something you can capture footage with, but it does give you the ability to use the display as a display, as well as having it work with the computer component too. And that's always been a neat little feature of these Lenovo all-in-ones that they do give you a monitor uh, that can be used for more than just the PC it is attached to. And also back there, you get a gigabit ethernet port for connecting up to your network if you choose to do that. They also have wireless AC built in so you can get high-speed wireless working on this as well. There's also two additional USB ports on the side of the display. And these ports are designed to work with this little dial connector that they include in the box. We're gonna cover this in a little bit more detail in a minute. And you can place this on either side and there are USB ports on both sides of the display to accommodate that. And I'll put that back in uh, in a second here. So overall, not too bad on the port selection and I really like that flexibility with the HDMI port. 
Now the display itself, as you can see, is very, very shiny. It also picks up fingerprints quite readily. And because it has a touch layer to it, the actual display is set back a bit from the glass versus what a non-touch 4K display might have. So be prepared for that. There's going to be a layer between the image and what you're seeing. And as a result of that, sometimes the display might look a little bit cloudy. It's not bad. In fact, it's better than I've seen on prior versions of Lenovo's all-in-ones, but it's definitely going to be something that won't look as nice as a true 4K non-touch display or something you might see on an iMac where that display surface is very close to the uh, glass on the front. Another issue we encountered with it is that when you do plug in devices, you can get 4K devices to work with it, but only at 30 hertz, and it doesn't look like it supports any HDR modes for devices you're plugging in. It does, though, support Dolby Vision 4K when you're using the computer with the display here. It also supports 60 hertz at 4K, again, on the computer, but not on the HDMI input. So there are some limitations to uh, the 4K display here if you're planning to plug things in, and I want you all to be aware of that before you get into it, but on the computer side, the 4K is not hindered at all. Now, a few other things to note on here. It does have a manual shutter for the webcam camera if you are concerned about people peeking on you. It also supports Windows Hello, so you can use the webcam to unlock the computer to get into it. Uh, the speakers on it are not bad. They've got Dolby Atmos speakers, decent range of sound to it, a little bit better than what you typically see with an all-in-one, and it really does sound pretty decent. You can, of course, hook up Bluetooth headphones or plug something into the headphone jack on the side to get better audio as well. And the overall fit and finish here feels really nice on this. It's got a nice sturdy metal arm here for adjusting the display. It stays put. It doesn't bounce around all that much while you're using it. Uh, the base here is also very sturdy and does not slide around all that much either unless you really put some effort into it. Uh, the whole package overall weighs about 32 pounds or 14.5 kilograms. So it's got a decent weight to it and overall a nice premium build quality to it. Let's now see how it performs. We'll begin with web browsing and a few other things, then we'll get into gaming. So let's kick things off with some web browsing. We've got a 4K 60 frames per second video playing back here on the browser, and it looks like it's able to keep up with that just fine. We did see a few drop frames when it started, but overall it's been able to keep everything flowing nicely here, and I would expect nothing less out of a six core i7 machine at this price point, so I was pleased with that performance. Uh, we also took a look at nasa.gov to do some web browsing and that sprung to life very quickly as expected. Again, we've got a pretty high-end chip in here that should be able to do all of the basics quite well. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 215.6 on version 1.0 of that test and 123 on version 2.0. Uh, that is now the top score we have ever seen on the speedometer benchmark from any of the machines we have ever tested here on the channel. And that, of course, is due to the fact that it has a faster processor than uh, just about everything else we have looked at in the past from a desktop computing standpoint. So I think uh, you'll have a very good experience doing the basics on this machine. In fact, in some cases, it might be overkill uh, for some of the basic tasks. But there is more to this machine than just browsing the web. So let's take a look now and see how the pen works on this one. And then we'll look at some higher end stuff like gaming. So I've loaded up the Microsoft Sketch application here to start with. And I've got the pen out here, of course. This is the pen that it comes with. And it feels pretty decent. It's got good wrist detection here. Uh, one thing I'm noticing, though, is that the pen is slipping as it's working its way across the display here. Uh, so it's not a consistent feel as you're drawing on it. And I think that might uh, be an issue for some artists who want precision. It will slip and slide a little bit as it makes its way across the display here. I'm not sure if maybe the uh, tip of the pen here is to blame or maybe the coating on the display isn't uh, consistent from a texture standpoint, but you'll definitely feel it slipping a little bit as you're drawing lines across. It does have pressure detection, so you can do light lines or push down and get uh, harder lines there. And it's kind of nice to have a big high resolution display here to work with. Now, as I mentioned, there is a dial control that can be placed on either side of the computer. It has two independent dials here along with a button, and they have an app that you can use to configure all of this stuff with supported applications. Uh, right now, it looks like it works with the uh, Adobe applications like Photoshop. It also works with the Microsoft Office apps and Autodesk Sketchbook, which is what I am using right now. Uh, not a lot of apps supported by it right now, but I'm guessing they'll probably add support down the road. 
Uh, what I'm going to do first here is have the large dial uh, be my brush size control, so I can change the size of my brush by turning the dial. I'm going to have the smaller dial here be my undo and redo control, and then I'm going to have the tools be hidden or shown uh, based on when I push the button on the end of the dial there. So if we go over to the button first, you can see that when I push it, the uh, controls disappear. If I use the large dial here, you can see that my brush size will uh, get smaller as I turn things. Looks like I have to take the pen off of there first, but you can see now as I turn the dial down, the pen gets smaller and smaller. And then if I want to do the undo and redo here, I can just turn the dial to uh, add or take away things that I have put on screen. It feels okay. It doesn't feel very polished. In fact, the entire pen experience here doesn't feel spectacular and professional, but it feels like it's fun for maybe a kid or somebody who's not all that serious about their art. There is some tactile feedback here on the dial as you're using it, so you can kind of feel it a little bit uh, pushing back as you turn things. But again, I wasn't all that impressed by this, and I think it might just be easier in some cases just to touch the screen, given that the screen is a lot closer to your hands than the dial is. You have to reach over across the screen to get to it, and perhaps maybe that's why they've got two different places to put the dial, depending on what you're doing with it. So let's move on now to gaming, and we didn't have any expectations for 4K here, but you can see Fortnite uh, getting about 30 frames per second at the absolute lowest 4K settings. Uh, we were rendering the 3D graphics at 4K here, uh, so it's passable, but of course you'll probably want higher frame rates. We found that you can get about 60 frames per second at 1080p if you set everything to about medium. Uh, Rocket League, we uh, were able to get 4K to run with max settings at around 30 frames per second. When we went down to the low settings, we got around 90 to 110 frames per second. Uh, so again, 1080p will probably be the sweet spot for image quality and frame rate there. Uh, GTA 5, surprisingly, we did get the game to work around the low 30 frames per second point with low settings at 4K. Again, 1080p will be a better place to go to get that trade-off of image quality and frame rate. Uh, the Witcher 3 ran terribly on uh, the 4K mode. We barely got 10 frames per second at ultra settings. Even low settings were 16 frames per second. Uh, 1080p, we got uh, around 40 to 50 frames per second at the lowest settings. And I think this is where you're seeing kind of the limitations of the GPU that's in here. Now, one thing you could do, of course, is plug in an external GPU to this with that Thunderbolt port, but you're gonna be spending a fortune on uh, trying to bring this computer up to a gaming computer specification. It would just be cheaper to buy a gaming computer in the end. And Lenovo has got a bunch they could sell you along with a number of other manufacturers too. So overall though, not bad for gaming because it does have a GPU that is functional but you'll probably be running those games at lower settings to get the frame rate that you're after for the best experience. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,774. That lines up very closely with machines powered by an NVIDIA GTX 1050 GPU, so that should give you some idea of what this is capable of. But check out the CPU score on the physics test, uh, 22.65 frames per second thanks to the fact that that chip has six cores on board and it can really crunch a lot of data at once. But again, this is not going to be a spectacular gaming machine, but it will be better than many computers that lack the discrete graphics processor. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a score of 99.40%. That test measures how well the computer can keep itself cool when it's under constant load, like it might be while you're playing games. Uh, it looks like it's going to do just fine there. You won't see too much variation of performance even when you are putting the computer under load for extended periods of time like you might do in a game or something similar. When it is under load though, that fan's going to kick on inside of the case. You will hear it. It's not a, a quiet fan, but it's also not a very high pitched one. It's more of a lower tone to it. Uh, but nonetheless, you will be hearing that fan running when you are gaming on this device. It sounds actually very similar to my iMac when it's under extreme load. So don't expect quiet running when you are stressing the computer. But the good news is, is that the performance will remain consistent. And one last thing to check out on here, and that is its high-end video performance. We've got Cody running here with a 140 megabit per second file, 10-bit. 4K, and it's playing that back just fine with no drop frames, and I would expect that. 
uh, out of a processor of this classification. So overall, it seems to be a decently performing computer. I do wish the pen feature felt a little bit more polished to me. Again, I'm feeling it kind of just slipping a little bit across the screen here. The dial doesn't feel all that great either. So that would be the one thing I would improve on this. But if you are looking for an all-in-one that has decent performance, it doesn't take up too much room, uh, that has the ability to charge your phone and everything else, it's kind of a nice little package that they've put together here. They've been making computers like this for probably five or six years now. In fact, when I first started the channel, uh, one of the first Lenovo products I looked at was something very similar to this. And it's nice to see that uh, Windows is catching up and providing some usability in this form factor now. So if you are looking for something that costs less than uh, the Microsoft Surface device that does a very similar function, this might be worth considering. Uh, just know though that the pen experience isn't fantastic on it, but the performance definitely is pretty good here. That'll do it for this one. Let me know what you thought down below in the video comments. And until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.